I think then uh, we should focus more on the graphs part than in that case. Let's say. Okay. Yeah, well, and if if the if the continued results that I'm seeing hold throughout today, I think it is safe for us to merge your your change for the nine oh number nine hundred four. I think London that it's we're not we we still want a global switch for it to have the ability to turn it off as an escape hatch. But that code, it's, I've been running it since Saturday in all sorts of stress environments in my, in my test setup. And I found one failure that was due to my tests having a mistake. And, oh, and okay. that, was, that was great. A message changed and I was checking for the message. And so, so that, that's okay, good. I was checking for something bad. The test was poorly coded. But good, the, te the the code change you made worked exactly. So, so which, I think which tests are you talking talking about, Mark? I and have what? I have a bunch of tests. I have a thousand plus jobs that I run inside a Jenkins server that check various conditions, and those okay. those tests, some of them are in this case were badly written. They were asserting that the message was shallow fetch, and the message is now shallow clone because yeah. we skipped the shallow fetch that was the redundant shallow fetch. fetch. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, your, your floor, Rishab, I think we're ready to merge. Uh, I'm gonna give it maybe another six or eight hours of test and then I'm likely to merge. Okay, so um, one of the first things I want to discuss is, so um, how much do I want to explain JMH and uh, how we are using it? So I was thinking of first talking about how do we, how have we integrated the JMH module inside the GitLine plugin? Then I can show uh, the repository, the JMH benchmark uh, folder inside it. And I want to ask, should I explore one of the benchmarks? Though we have, although we just have 15 minutes, do we want to, we don't want to go there, right? So. So I'll just show. Need, 15 minutes is not nearly enough to show source code. Yes, so, okay, so no code. So I'll just show that this is the module with, where we code our benchmarks. Then the second step is how do we run it on uh, the infrastructure? So I, I can show the step we have added on, in the Jenkins file. Um, and I think for this, we don't need to show the, uh, the Blue Ocean pipeline that's not needed. And uh, after that, uh, I was, I'm thinking since I have, uh, just one second, I have uh, integrated the JMH report plugin inside the uh, Jenkins instance, I can show how that is working. So this is a project which is a pipe which checks out uh, the, so I have a, uh, before this, I have a standalone project uh, for uh, JMH uh, and uh, uh, so it has git client plugin as a dependency in the pom and uh, and it it's it runs uh, from a different command it doesn't it's not running in the same way we usually do so we, uh, we usually run our benchmarks it, it doesn't run from maven's command it runs from java jar uh, as a java jar so um, so uh, the pipeline is simple it checks out uh, the standalone project and then it builds it uh, maven clean install and then it the test Stay the testing stage of it. It contains. Um, I'd rather show the Jenkins, but it's okay. The testing uh, stage of it contains uh, uh, running the benchmarks, and then uh, I have added the JMS report plugin. You just have to add um, a stage where you have to point it out to the uh, to the JSON file, which is going to be um, generated by the benchmarks. So once you have that, there's this uh, another. Uh, tab here, which is called JMH report. And once we open it, so for the bench, so I, I just ran one benchmark because I wanted quick results. And uh, this is how it's going to show visually. It's, it's the same website. It's basically the website we use uh, to visualize the benchmarks. So there are some options as well. Switch the scale if we really want to see small, uh, want to increase the bit and then uh, so if we, if we have multiple benchmarks, it's going to comparatively show multiple benchmarks as well. I was thinking to, uh, when I demo this tomorrow, I'm going to put multiple benchmarks here so that it looks a little uh, maybe better. So 
so these are the three uh, i could say uh, stages of how we are working with benchmarks with uh, git client plugin and then i think the second point is and so i was thinking of removing some of the slides because it's my currently my presentation is about 20 21 slides and it might increase as i work upon it tonight as well so i i would want to reduce it because i just have 15 minutes for it um then i was thinking of uh, skipping the parameters or uh, the uh, the parameters i wanted to discuss more i was thinking to first come to the results and the graphs and the inferences and maybe if people are interested they would ask questions what are our parameters or should i explain them before going to the results what do you what do you think guys what do you think i prefer results first i think people will be much more interested in results than the road you travel to get to the results particularly in only 15 minutes if That's if you highlight the results yes omkar Uh, yep so uh, i was saying like mark said that uh, you can focus more on the results so you can just focus more on the problem and both like uh, just tell them what was the problem and what result were found for that that two two part you uh, know for that sure so um so how how i was thinking of showing uh, the results was first to um, show uh, the so i can i can include the parameters or i could first show the result here that okay this is the results we have got with git fetch benchmarking git fetch and then i could explain okay this this machine was uh, was running on this version of git so do we want to go to the details where we i explain the version of git the platform and uh, java 8 or java 11 where am i running it so um, that's that's something i was i'm not sure. maybe i can just write it here and not speak about it that's also something i can do um so the results so i what i've done here is what you can see here is a clear difference in uh, the behavior of jgate's performance it's kind of uh, so what you see here is with uh, the first uh, graph is uh, the performance benchmark on uh, mac os my local machine and the second benchmark is on a centos 7 uh, machine so the first result you see uh, what we see here is that um, so there's this intersection the repository size before that intersection is around less than 5 mb and what we see is something we've already discussed that jgit is performing better than git y axis is the average time execution uh, and this all of this is in milli uh, Uh, microseconds per uh, milliseconds per operation and uh, so what we see is for a smaller size repository jgit is performing better and after a point uh, one we could call this as a decision variable for our uh, improvement it, it's a size where we decide we will we'll switch the implementations jgit starts to exponentially uh, degrade in performance uh, as we've seen uh, so the a quant this is a visual graph quantitatively there's for a 300 size repository there is a 1.5 minutes difference between jgit and git performance so um so with the first graph you can clearly see how the nature is changing as the repository size increases the second graph also uh, the nature is same though the intersection point comes at a later stage so there's something which uh, we need to explore more is to find the optimal intersection point uh, with multiple iteration of benchmarks because uh, in, at the first case we can see, we could assume that uh, maybe for a repository size of 10 mb that is where we going we are going to switch to uh, git uh, instead of jgit but in the second one it comes at a very later stage uh, so the reasons when we discuss so we have discussed both of these results in one of our previous uh, uh, meetings and uh, the reason which we could find out was with, with my local machine uh, uh, there could be disturbances uh, which are which would not be present in this sent to a 7 machine this is a master node in a cluster so um, and it's 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 not it was not doing anything at the time i think it was a freshly installed um, uh cl uh cluster so it was not doing anything at the time so so the differences uh, in the results could account to that 
reason and my local machine was also profiling at the time doing a lot of other things as well so uh, this is how i was thinking this this was i was thinking this is the most this might be the most effective way to show the results because we sh we can uh, show the, the change in nature of uh, performance when it comes to uh, jgate's relationship with the size of repository so um, yeah instead of bar graphs this this seems like a um, better way to visualize the change and um, i think after that with git ls remote should i talk uh, i can talk about it right git ls remote we have no differences between the implementations so um, okay so i think i have discussed that i'm going to change the graph i've prepared the graphs i have replaced them here so it's basically the same thing but with a clearer uh, visualization after this uh, one more issue i have is that with fixing redundant fetch uh, the when we were estimating the impact on the performance i have run several multiple other benchmarks to confirm that uh, to confirm from those benchmarks that there is less than a second's difference between uh, the redundant fetch and uh, the initial fetch the, uh, the addition of the redundant fetch is adding less than a second in for a, for a repository size uh, 5 mb to a repository size uh, 800 mb as well i haven't seen more than a second's difference which is <laughs> so so yeah so i was thinking this is kind of cheating maybe but uh, so with my profiling results i have a very uh, i think here i can show okay i uh, when we fixed the redundant fetch issue the second fetch uh, so i have the red box you can see the second fetch it takes around what 10.6 seconds so we uh, so in profiling we could see that by uh, after uh, after applying the fix we would remove uh, this much amount of time from the total execution of the uh, checkout step but uh, when it comes to benchmarks if i want to show the results from benchmarks there visually it's very difficult either i uh, i take it in milliseconds and um, i switch the scale but visually it won't make any difference when we show the results so uh, this is also a point where i wanted your um, the advice of you guys what should i do i think for me saying that the data does not give does not support does not say that there is a consistent dramatic improvement that's a true statement however removing redundant operations we have reports from the field from from users that the redundant operation was expensive for them we're trusting that and trusting that by removing a redundant operation we're probably not going to harm performance i wouldn't okay. worry about trying to justify it with data at this point because i i already tried that route and the users kept coming back to me saying mark i don't care that it is very cheap for you to do an incremental fetch the second time it's not cheap for me and and i can't refute what the users say right i i they their experience is real and they ran their numbers and they said look that second fetch is costing me this much agree so, so i i yeah. i would i would in this case it's i i refuse to fight with the users anymore they're right we should stop doing redundant work yeah and okay, i so i think the other thing is is like they they may have characteristics that we're not talking about here like uh you talked about size of the repository and maybe it's something else going on in in their repository that triggers this so right. i agree with mark okay so so sure, so i should show the benchmark results and not this or i should show both what should i i wouldn't even worry about showing either of them probably right. like just, just probably can hand wave over it Okay. Yeah, you're presenting to a bunch of software people. The word redundant is 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 one of those evils in software people, right? They say, "Ooh, redundant is bad. Get rid of it." So you don't even have to justify getting rid of it. You just say it's redundant. We proved it's redundant and we removed it. Okay. Yeah, and you can just say like there are a lot of people in the there 
I don't know how many people in the field, but there are folks in the field who are saying that this was causing them significant increase in time. And so we've removed right. it. Okay. We validated that it wasn't necessary and it was in fact redundant and there should be no harm in removing it for everyone else. Okay, sounds great, okay. Uh, after that, this is also, um, so this is one of the benchmarks I, uh, where I tried to perform the same operation, but with, uh, with a remote repository instead of uh, using a local Git repository. And this is a Git fetch operation. And uh, so this is, I think it's kind of an obvious fact that uh, if we include network uh, while we're fetching, it's going to increase the time of that operation. So, so should I show this result? It, it just shows that without network, uh, the performance of uh, the individual implementations for Jenkins repo, which is around 360 MB, and for Ruby repo, which is around 470 MB, and we just, so the graphs, they show that without network, uh, it's the blue. So we have a, uh, there's an increase in the performance over it when we add network to the equation of bench, benchmarking the operations. So, and it's, it's for both of them, for Git and for JGit as well. So, uh, so I also wanted to ask, should I show this? Is this something we should show on, uh, in the demo? 15 minutes gap. I don't, I, I don't know that you're going to get any benefit to the audience telling them that networks are slower than local access to disk drives. Mm -hmm. I, I think, yeah. I think they, if they don't understand that, they'll understand it soon enough. And so okay. I'm, I'm surprised that the, the differences between those, between the with and without network are not larger than they are. So, so that, but, but I'm not interested in exploring. It probably says you're, you're somehow near a university in India and they have really great connections to local, local caches. And that's wonderful. I'm glad. <laughs> okay. And uh, the results might be a little uh, for the, uh, for the network one, they might be a little, uh, they may not be um, accurate because uh, the error rate is too huge. When I, when I use network to benchmark it, just the, er the error increases. Mm -hmm. So that's also something. Uh, after that, so the next thing I could talk about, the last thing could be, uh, what do we want to do in the phase two? And uh, so the first thing is, of course, our, uh, the estimator we are thinking about, the heuristics which we are going to use. Uh, then right now, uh, whatever performance evaluation I have done in Git plugin, it is, it is around Git SCM checkout step. Uh, so I, I, I want to move on to other areas of the plugin. And, uh, the third thing would be to, uh, so right now, uh, most of my results, they came before I started valid validating them at the very basic level. So, um, what I want in the next phase is to improve the benchmark, the validation, the results to have more confidence when we uh, when we have a result apart from of course taking the opinion and um, uh, and other uh, ways of validation like profiling the J, uh, the jenkins uh, instance uh, the benchmarks themselves should uh, have a uh, method to validate so um, so what i want to discuss is how should we discuss the heuristics we are going to use or uh, something like that, or is that something we uh, should avoid and just just tell them that these are the things we are planning to do in the next phase? I, I think you're saying that we've we've realized that Git rep we have data that says Git repository size matters, but we cannot yeah. always determine the size of a repository. Therefore, we we believe the next step is apply some heuristics to decide how big this repository is, and and. We, we don't always have the repository locally, therefore, and that, that would be enough for me as the description. Why, why are we using, doing anything about repository size? Because the graphs in the earlier part of the presentation proved repository yes. size matters. Okay. Okay, so um, uh, I guess this is what I think I'm going to show in the demo. Is there anything else you guys think I have missed which I should show? 
So you, your second line item there reminds me that there are there are known challenges or potential challenges hiding in multi-branch pipelines and organization folders uh, that may be related to locking. And so, okay. so my, my repository with 150 or 175 branches sometimes spends a lot of time waiting for a lock on the, on the cache, on the master, on the master. So you, that may in fact turn into a very interesting angle for performance that isn't JGit Git specific, but is very much still in, impacting a user. User, okay. So, so you're saying yeah. you're going to broaden is, it, to me sounds positive, yeah. Okay, and uh, so, okay, so should, so whatever you explained right now, the issue with locking the cache, should I add you that? Or no, I no, should, no, 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 just I saying that you, cache? no, no, just saying that you're broadening it is already enough. Okay. <laughs> that's, okay. that's, that there is more to investigate is already statement enough for me. You, no way should you describe which specific things, because we don't know that. That's just me making yeah. wild speculative guesses. Agreed, agreed, Mark. So, um, Anything else uh, in terms of the uh, the visualization or uh, the way are, we are showing? Yes, Omar. are we covering the uh, that difference in Git CLI and JGit for tomorrow's presentation? Uh, yes, Somkar. CLI Git uh, and JGit is what I was showing here. I oh, did yes, not explain yes, as clearly yes. as uh, as I would in the demo. Uh, I okay. actually uh, we have discussed it uh, a lot of times before you came to the meeting yep. so that is why maybe you uh, yeah I'll, I'll i'll discuss it at length tomorrow yep. this is the uh, this is the main thing we have i think so yes yeah. so uh just to uh like not for tomorrow's demo i've posted the message on zoom also so uh like what i can see here in the first graph is like jgit and git cli are trying to merge again like for the bigger size repositories so i think we can okay. explore that in the phase two if needed uh, actually omkar uh Actually, one one thing I, I forgot to mention is that this is not the scale here is logarithmic. It's not linear. I switched it because I uh, with linear the behavior was not as uh, okay. uh, obvious as it was with. Uh, so I, I think I should mention that before yep, yep, yep. explaining because the quantities okay. you see on the y-axis they're not um, actually the real and, quantity. But for me, okay. the fact that you chose log scale makes it much clearer. When yep. there's that intersection, it's it's not coming back, right? It's JGit yes. is going to get slower and slower. And when you said exponential, I thought no way is it, it no way is it exponential. But you're using log scale, therefore yes. it actually is exponential, exponentially getting worse. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, I use the word without <laughs> without really thinking about it, but yes, Mark, you were really good explanation okay. to it. Okay, that that sounds great. Then. Okay. Um, Yes, I think that's, uh, apart from this, I, 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 I also, yes, yes, Mark. Is there one more that we need to ask for availability of the, the, the JMH plugin on ci.jenkins.io so we can visualize yes. these things? Because I don't think it's there right now, and I think yes. it would help us, particularly given that there are resources on ci.jenkins.io that are not available to you elsewhere. Right, it's got a, a system 390 mainframe from IBM. If you haven't it's got the benchmarks then. right. So um, my, uh, I actually I forgot to ask you how do we do do we add uh, steps in Jenkins file? There's a modification Jenkins file, and also we have to request for those in uh, uh, extra infrastructure uh, platforms. They already or, exist. Already exist. Just okay. We just have to modify our Jenkins file. Right, and, and I can the, I can yeah. show you a Jenkins file that already uses them, so I have an example that yeah. you can use as a reference uh, when when you're ready to say I want to run on PowerPC and on ARM sixty four Graviton and on System three ninety. When you when you reach okay. that point where you're ready, I've got a a simple Jenkins file that already shows it. Okay. And uh, for the uh, plugin to be installed in the infrastructure, I would have to raise a request, or is there a pro is there a uh, manual or yeah, and inf just raise an infra ticket. So the, the oh, Jenkins okay. Jira raise an infra ticket. Okay. Okay, I'll do that. Okay, so uh, one more thing I explored during these days was uh, was was heuristics, the possible heuristics we're using. 
for the repository size estimation and uh, with uh, with one of the uh, one of the ways we are trying to determine the size uh, that is um, using the apis the rest apis provided by the providers of uh, git so uh, what i want to ask is that uh, first of all with git plugin i've seen a lot of browsers so those are those are the providers which uh, are implementing the git uh, sem right first of all that is my sort question. of what the browsers are is those are simple transformations from a repository url to a diff url so a repository oh. a repository uri because it's not always a url a repository uri that may be git at github.com colon marquee weight slash git dash client dash plugin dot git needs to be mapped to something and the mapping to is https something something okay. with parameter replacement so those browser things are just ways to view changes so they're not they're not much more than that in fact they're they're nothing okay. more than that so so when so when i'm uh, writing the rules to um, so uh, to get the sizes of a repository hosted in git github gitlab how many providers do i consider while i'm doing that how how do we know uh, where is the repository hosted so we would have to figure that out but even if we figure that out there are i, I don't know possibly uh, more than five providers who would uh, be using uh, this functionality so we would need all of them or or how how should we think about that or should we uh, just assume that uh, okay we can provide it for some of the providers and uh, and if the, if if it's not the case then we fall back to the third heuristic i th i think that we would this is a case where we would probably want to use the jenkins concept of an extension point where okay. what what that allows is a plugin can say i am going to declare this capability and then other plugins may actually implement and contribute to that and okay. by allowing them to contribute to it we would provide you would provide a basic implementation in the git plugin and it would probably only use command line git and have all sorts of flaws because it's only using command line git but then you might go to the gitlab plugin or to the GitHub plugin and implement that extension point and use the REST APIs from the GitLab plugin to make calls to GitLab and answer the question better than if then it can be done from, from the Git plugin. Git plugin, okay. So, so the, at least I think that's, now this is just me, me thinking that Fran and Justin may have more experience in that area, but my sense is this is a place where you do something small in the Git plugin, but that other plugins may add their own capability. Okay. Now, now yeah, what Mark, that- Mark, Mark, Mark is right. Uh, what you have to do in this case is just uh, expose an, uh, an extension. And in case that any other plugin wants to use the extension, they can just, uh, 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 collect the extension, look for the extension, and just make use of, of it, or even extend the extension. So it's uh, it's another new extension that uh, that is going to be used instead of the, the previous one. Okay. Okay. And um, I guess uh, okay. So I'm going to explore uh, how to uh, create an extension point and how we could do that. The second question I had was how uh, how would we ranking the heuristics are we going like the heurist the first one is if we find a if you find a local cache then it's that's the best thing then we we get the size the second is the apis we trust the apis then the third is the last one is uh, ktls remote yeah, is, yeah. is is that how we should um, select but that seems reasonable to me i've seen in in other places things like a popularity weighting where where the the heuristic provides its own assessment of its weighting and and you ask the implementer please provide 
your, your assessment of the reliability of this heuristic as a, as a numeric value, for instance. And you say okay. the, the, the value of the, the reliability of the local cache is absolutely one. You know, it's, it's, it's flawless. There, it, mm -hmm. There's not much better than that heuristic. But, yes. And the, the reliability of the API call is probably 0.9 because it's pretty good. Everything else is far below that, right? Counting branches is wildly below that. And then we, we bias towards the ones that are stronger. Okay, and uh, the last question, I guess, with uh, the heuristic is, uh, with Git LS remote, how do we, uh, so how do we reach, uh, how do I reach to a point where I can decide, okay, this is a size where I want, so I, I want Git, CLI Git, when there's a large size repository, let's say 300. So how do I correlate the number of references to this size? Should I uh, just have uh, uh, maybe a lot of, I should take a lot of repositories and perform git ls remote on it. Uh, maybe, you know, create a benchmark where I have, uh, not a benchmark, maybe a JJ unit test where I just iterate through a lot of repositories, collect a lot of data, and then average through to get some experimental results because uh, otherwise it's more of a, because I, I am not sure if there is a direct core, there is not a, go, a direct correlation between the number of sizes and the size of the repository. So if we want that heuristic to be remotely uh, close to uh, what we want to predict, I think uh, a good idea would be to have a lot of repositories from a small, small size number to vary it uh, to a large, large uh, size repository and then uh, collect that data, average it and maybe come to a, uh, a decision variable where we can decide uh, provide a reliable heuristic. Yeah, I, that, I like the idea of sampling. I think that's a very wise thing to say. I'm going to go sample repositories to, to, test, to test any one of those heuristics. I, you, you definitely should not describe those things in tomorrow's presentation, but mm -hmm. as we continue our discussions, yeah, we should, we should evaluate I, it may be that you ultimately will decide that LS remote is such a poor heuristic to just discard it. And that's perfectly okay too, to say, look, there is no correlation that we could rely on at all. No, I, I get it now. Okay. So I guess uh, this is it from my side. Uh, for the demo, I'm going to improve the presentation over the night, the visualizations and uh, the overall look and uh, possibly practice once or twice so that I don't overshoot from 15 minutes. Right, uh, the, the amazing power of a stopwatch. Yeah, the amazing power of a stopwatch. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Yes. So I, yeah, I mean, I guess the, the thing I usually try and do with presentations is think about how many slides I have versus how much time I'm gonna to need to spend on each slide. Uh, each slide, yeah. Uh, be careful about adding too many slides because you'll invariably speak a little bit differently when you're presenting in front of people too. Um, okay, I see. okay, I'm going to I'm going to redu reduce the number of slides I have here. Yes. Yeah, we already talked about some of that. Yeah. Stuff, yeah. 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 Okay. <clears throat> so I guess this is it. We should end the meeting. I'm stopping my. Where yeah, is? Okay. Excellent. So, we'll guys. Bye. Thanks, Rashad. We'll we're looking forward to your presentation tomorrow. You're going to be great. <laughs> Thanks, Mark.